we going to be in it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn around. You don't want to be in it? <laughs> well, I didn't know you were doing it. Okay. Well, I can be in it. It's fine. <clears throat> we're going to go see Patty O'Donnell. She's my oldest living relative, 94 years old. She's in a retirement community doing very well. So I'm sure she's got some good stories for us. I remember sitting at the tape, you know, we, right. my mother always had everybody home on, on Sunday. Sunday. And I remember that came over the radio. And I remember Fred saying, I'm going to join the Navy. Uh, oh, we should turn on the Navy. There's a lot of good stuff on. happening here. Go on. I started the camera just into Patty's recollection of Pearl Harbor. Fred Zito, who we talk about a good deal, was my grandfather, my mother's dad. This video is a long one. I've made a few cuts, but really, it was such a lovely conversation, I wanted to share most of what was recorded. Earlier, Exploring My Roots videos looked at branches of my family that had more of a rural farming background and ones that were more small town America on the West Coast. This video is yesteryear, but back on the East Coast. All right, I'm so. I'm going to chime in if necessary on a, on a detail about the, uh, about being in the mafia. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's stories from this family, for My sure. My was not in the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> was, he was friends with mafios. Don't <laughs> stop talking about it. <laughs> okay, so I'm here with my mom and Frankie and Lynn, and this is Rosemary O'Donnell. Rosemary. Rosemary, and her family name is Patty. My family nickname. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nobody knows me by Rosemary. <laughs> I know the and first time I came here. And when people first started to call me Patty. that here, I it's didn't like, know who, who's, they were who's talking Rosemary? about. Yeah. <laughs> How about Pammy that day? Pammy and you and Vicky were here. Right. And you were asking for the names Patty. of everybody's names, and Vicky said, to, Well, you didn't say uh, you. And I said, We said, Yeah. She said, Well, who's Rosemary? <laughs> and I said, That's me. <laughs> we didn't know before no. that. How did you get your name? Patty. How, how did that come about? Yeah. That was my brother Army's idea. When I was born, I went, I must have been born at home. I'm not sure about that. But anyhow, he told my mother he wanted me to be called Patty. Mm. And she said she's going to be called Rosemary. Oh. So he always called me Patty. And everybody else called me Patty. So. So one day I was going to the grocery store for my mother. And she yelled to me, because it was just up the street. And she said, she yelled, Rosemary, because she always called me Rosemary. Mm -hmm. And Army was on the porch there, and he said, Mom, who are you calling? <laughs> and she said, your sister, you don't even remember her name. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to hear some more stories about what it was like growing up when you did, and, you know, what were things like as far as uh, family life and the community and the yeah. you know, big family that I think was more standard back then? There was always something going on in our family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a good family to grow up in. Mm -hmm. I have a question. How did you manage with all those girls in one bathroom? Well, we weren't all there at the same time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, Eight sisters and four brothers, but spaced out a little bit? Yeah, well, you know, by the time I was there, it was only Joni, me, and Pam, and Junie. And, Still a lot, though. Yeah, but we managed. I mean, there was a lot of knocking on bathroom doors, <laughs> <laughs> saying, when are you getting done there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. We used to do it. Saturday, we would get ready and walk downtown. You know. You had a ritual? Kind yeah, of? we used to do it almost every Saturday. That's cool. We'd walk down the, it used to be Jimmy's Sunday shop. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and we'd go there. We, we always had good times together. 
we had disagreements, but you know what? They would just blow over. <laughs> that was nice. My father never disciplined us. No, he, he just had a habit of lifting up his eyeglasses and oh. looking at us. Ooh. Show us how he did it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> just like this. <laughs> or like me, this. Give me, another, give me the closer look. <laughs> <laughs> but my mother was quick with her hands. <laughs> she she disciplined us. <laughs> Did you ever get swatted? A lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> How about Fred? Fred, you know, Fred was a big tease to my mother. He teased her so much that one time he had her so aggravated that he there was a wall by our back porch mm -hmm. and he ran to the wall because she was yelling at him because he teased her so much. She picked up a kitchen chair and threw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't hit him. No, she didn't hit she him. She missed. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes she'd be doing something like shelling peas or string beans or something and he'd tie her apron strings to her chair. And yeah, when she'd get up, you know, <laughs> I mean, he would do things like that. So he's always been... Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time when, and I was real young when this happened, he, we had a radio station in our town called WST. And he came home one afternoon and he said, hey, you kids, because that's what he called us, listen to the radio tonight because I'm going to sing. <laughs> oh. He went to the radio station and made arrangements to sing that night. Really? Yes, yeah, so we all sat around and listened to him sing on the radio. <laughs> he was never backward. <laughs> not, not a shy person? No. <laughs> no. When we were, you know, like Dad was on an expense account, and so we would go to these kind of fancy restaurants that had you know, entertainment. Yeah. And then when they take a break, he would just go up on the stage and play the, start singing play the or playing the spoons or whatever, the piano or whatever was up there. <laughs> did, did they have a piano at your house when you were yeah. growing up? We did had people piano. take lessons or did Fred just sit down and start Johnny playing? Johnny took lessons and June, that June did. Mm -hmm. And Army played I don't know if Army took lessons, but he played. Mm -hmm. It was a player piano, and, wasn't it? it yeah, was it was a player I piano. That. And Fred played too, but um, I think he just played by ear. And he played more like Hunky Tonk. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. know when Mom was taking piano lessons, and she'd get so frustrated. And then he would just sit down and play it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Play by ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he heard it once, he could sit down and play it. <laughs> well, my sister June, she wanted to play the trumpet. No, the clarinet. Mm -hmm. So, my brother Phil, you know, he had that sporting goods pawn store. shop, like yeah. a sporting good, and he brought the clarinet home so she could have lessons. Well, then she got rheumatic fever. And my mother said, you know, why don't you take the clarinet lessons? And I said, I don't want to take clarinet lessons. And she said, well, why don't you just try it? So one summer, our music teacher, Mr. Yerkowicz, at Shaw. <laughs> he was still there when I went to school. <laughs> yes, oh I know. <laughs> he was going to give lessons. Mm -hmm. So I took lessons from him. But I wasn't a very good student, and it didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because it was a clarinet and not something else, or just musical? In I general? just wasn't interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> what were you into? What was what was your thing? I really like to look to play sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I used to like to play badminton and um, volleyball and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's where I got the badminton urge. There you go. One of the things that you've said too about that you're, with your parents, you know, and when they first came to Pennsylvania, they located in basically an Italian village, you know, Rosetta, which was kind of a everybody who came over from there created this new yeah. town. That was good. And, and, and I'm sure everybody from. spoke Italian, and your parents spoke Italian, but you guys didn't learn to speak Italian. We only learned to understand it. 
well, the older people in our family did. Mm -hmm. My sister Grace, Lucy, Mamie. Mm -hmm. Army always spoke Italian. <laughs> Because he used to speak Italian to me when I worked for him in the grocery store when he didn't want the customers to know what he was saying. <laughs> okay. But I thought your parents didn't want you to speak Italian. My parents wanted us to speak English. Well, they figured we're living in this country, we should speak the language. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a sister-in-law whose father came to this country and he never learned to speak English. Pretty isolating if you can. Yeah, and every yeah. time, they lived in a town called Martin's Creek. So every time I would go there, he would say, here comes that Italian girl that doesn't speak Italian. So when I got so annoyed with him telling me this all the time, that one day I went there and he, that, that was the first thing that came out of his mouth, that I was the Italian girl that didn't talk Italian. <laughs> And I said to him, well, I want to tell you something. I said, my parents didn't want us to learn t Italian. They wanted us to speak English. And they both learned English. <laughs> and he never said that to me again. <laughs> I wonder how they learned it. Just my mother and dad? Yeah. You know, I really don't know. It's hard, but, hard to learn they, at an older age. But they really did learn. Well, my dad... They were young when they came here. Mm -hmm. What did your dad do as a profession? He worked at Treadwell Engineering. He was a core maker. I wonder where he learned how yeah. to do that. Probably in Italy. Hmm. Treadwell Engineering core maker. What, what exactly is that? Well, Frank can explain that more than I can. I really don't know what it is. When you're casting metals, you make a mold for them. Mm -hmm. And for the interior, they're obviously hollow when they're completed. Somebody has to make the interior portion of the mold called the core. Okay. So, so it's a thin so shell. It forms around this core, and then you get what you need, like a pump casing or something. So okay. that was his profession. They were made of wood, and he would have, he would have, they were very intricate. And he was a highly skilled craftsman. And then your mom was a homemaker. She was busy having babies and taking care of kids. And she was busy. And she cooked a lot. Yeah, she cooked a lot and laundered a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't What kind of food did she cook? Was it always Italian? She didn't make hamburgers or anything? Oh yes, she did. Oh yeah? <laughs> she made a couple different meals every night because we didn't want the Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What was your relationship with your brothers, and did you ever get s sent out to find them and retrieve them? All the time, especially Fred. <laughs> he was the one I had to go after all the time, because he used to like to shoot crabs. Okay. And so there were a couple places where they... Couple were they hanging out doing crabs. that, and you have to go yeah. find them? I had to go find them. Your mom would send you. <laughs> and it was always me that had to go get them, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was afraid of you. Did you have any resistance when you went to get them? No. He'd say, I'll be there, but he wouldn't be there right away. He'd come it when was he was good ready. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so, how old would you both be then? Well, I could have been only eight or nine years old because, you know. Wow. So you must not have had to go too far. No, it was just up the street. And one place was down the street. Okay. <laughs> you had hangouts. So now, when you grew up, did you have animals or gardening or different, uh, different things like that? We never had. My dad had a cat. Okay. And it was called Jezebel. Mm -hmm. But it was his cat, and my mother had asthma, so the cat was never in the house. Mm -hmm. We had like a side porch that was enclosed, so the cat would either be there or in the basement or on the porch with my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only animal I ever remember. But he had a garden. He had a big garden because my mother canned a lot. Yeah, yeah. And we always had to help in the summertime. What sort of chores did you have to do? <laughs> Going to get dad. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, we all had to help. Like on Thursday and Friday nights were our cleaning nights. 
couple of us would clean upstairs and a couple downstairs. And we always helped with the ironing. And on Saturday morning, I know my job used to be to scrub the kitchen floor. <laughs> so we always had jobs. Only the girls? The, the guys didn't do much that I can remember. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't ever remember them cutting the grass or anything. My dad took care of the yard. Didn't the girls do everything for the boys, yeah. including iron their underwear? Yeah, they, that's, well, I didn't because I refused. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mother <laughs> one day, she said, you have to iron all the stuff, the shorts and all, and I said, Who's going to see those? And she, she said, well, when you, when people come, if they open the drawers, you oh. know, if they look nice. I said, people aren't supposed to come in your house and open. That's when I got swatted. <laughs> making, they're making too much sense. And, I, and I'm like that today. If you open those drawers, you'd be amazed. <laughs> Now, all, all four of your brothers served in the military, correct? Yeah, my brother Phil went in. He was drafted in the army. World War Two. Two, but he was he was he went through his training. They sent him to Texas, and then next thing I know, he was back home because they said he was too old. How old was he? I don't know, but oh. he, he was back. Wow. And then what about the others? So Ar there's Phil. Phil. And then Army. Army and Mike and Fred all went in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And they enlisted, they weren't drafted. They, yeah, they enlisted. Mm -hmm. What was the, the stories there with them being in the military? You know, I really don't remember much of it. I know, I remember Army was in Hawaii. I remember Mike. He had appendicitis right before he was supposed to go away. But he went to Rhode Island. And I remember my mother being really upset because he had just had that operation. So, and I don't know how they got, but they went to Rhode Island. And I don't know if Army drove them. I just don't remember how they got there because we had relatives in Rhode Island. So they went and then they got to see Mike. So she was more satisfied, you know, mm -hmm. when they came home. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, you know, I don't know if you know that. Did Fred ever tell you that he played football? I don't recall. I don't recall. Him and Mike used to play football every Sunday afternoon for the Castell Club. So every Sunday after dinner, I used to go along with them to the football games <laughs> and watch them. Sure. Sure. So, they they really enjoyed that. Yeah, sports and uh, group activities were a much bigger thing back then than they are these days with everybody just on their cell phones. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. The Castel Club, also known as the Castel de Lucio, yeah. was an Italian club. Hmm. And even in, in my day, many years later, when I played sports, they sponsored sports teams for youth. For the youth. <laughs> And so did the police club. The police club, pioneer club. Yeah, they all sponsored. All social clubs that were. Castel was oriented towards Italian. Yeah, but there were a lot of a lot of clubs for kids, activities. So it was a really, I mean, it was a good place to live. And Easton, and grow up. Easton, 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 Pennsylvania. Easton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even when the boys came back, other than Fred, did everybody come back to Easton? And as the girls got married, did they stay in Easton? Wasn't everybody pretty close together? We were living within blocks of each other mm -hmm. as we got older and got married. Mm -hmm. Mamie had a grocery store. And our, well, that was when Army and them were in the service. When Army came out, he bought the store for Mamie, hmm. and then I worked for him. By that time, I was in high school. First I worked for Mamie, and then I worked for Army. They used to pay us $5 a week to work in the store and stock the shelves and wait on customers. Yeah. Yeah. You were way overpaid. <laughs> that, that was a lot of money in those days. <laughs> 
we were two doors down from the store, all of us on Neskahoney Street, right? Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Did, was dad, did dad come back there? Because I thought he stayed out west. He did. He's the only one, though. The rest of them were there in Easton, and you've told Everybody stories Easton. before about how we all lived there. Every, all the blocks. cousins, you know, you all hung out together at Christmas time yeah. and Sunday dinners. Yeah. So. Tell her about that. I think all three of those boys ended up in the Pacific fleet in the Navy because of where they subsequently served. But the training was scattered across the country. Yeah. Hawaii, Rhode Island, the yeah. West Coast. I mean, it, it's, it's were, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they were stationed all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would they write letters home? Yeah, my mother used to get a lot of letters. In fact, our mailman got to be such a good friend. <laughs> That he used to come in and sit down and have coffee. <laughs> Here's the postcards and where's my cookies? <laughs> well, when my, you know, my mother used to make a cookie called, it's called Scott the Lodz. And it's just a real thin cookie. It's shaped like a pretzel. Mm -hmm. And then you put powdered sugar on it. Well, one day he yeah. stopped in. The insurance man was there too. Mm -hmm. And the insurance man had a black top coat on. Uh oh. And he was eating these cookies and <laughs> he had powdered sugar all over his coat. Yeah. But the mailman used to come and he'd sit for maybe an hour talking to my mother, <laughs> tell her about, you know, he'd tell her about what was in the letters and all that stuff. He was He was reading the mail before he delivered it. <laughs> <laughs> he was a really nice man. He didn't live too far from us. He lived he built a house at the top of Horseshoe Bend on um, Morgan's Hill. Those were the days when the mailman had a strap and a giant leather bag yep. on one hip and yep. walked from house to house. And they walked. Yeah. Well, I suppose if you were a social person back then, that'd be the perfect job. Because <laughs> you get to know about everybody doing everything. And I remember. You just his, everybody his, on a regular basis. His first name was Vince. <laughs> So yeah. what's the mafia story? That's. I can tell it. Still, a, still ahead. a family secret. A little. No, it's not a secret. <laughs> okay, a I, secret. I don't think it's true that he was directly in the mafia, and I'll say why. Well, who was it? It was my we, sister Grace's husband. Joe Joe jo jo Bellotta. Because we were at dinner at the Roma one night as a family when I was a little boy, but we were all four there: Billy and mom and dad. And Joe Galata was sitting in the corner with a guy named Johnny Gatto. Oh, boy. And we got done with dinner. And I remember this, even at being little, and we got to pay. And your sister, who was waiting on us, said, Johnny Gatto has this. So later on, the FBI raided the vicinity and took people into custody. They took Johnny Gatto into custody, <laughs> but they did not take Joe Galata into custody. When Johnny Gatto was facing jail time, all of a sudden he developed a heart condition which made him not a candidate to go to jail. <laughs> so I don't think Joe was directly in the Mafia, but he was, he was befriended by members of. Yeah. But I don't think he was in the Mafia. Definitely had the names. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of good Italian names back yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. And one of your brothers was a priest? No. No. Okay. okay. My so niece's son is oh, right. okay. the bishop of Alabama. So your sister Lucy. So my sister Lucy's daughter's. Son. It's her son. Okay. Okay. And he's not just a priest. No, he's a bishop. Oh wow. Were Were you ever aware of the boys' war experience? For example, Army or Fred. Uh, All I remember is that Army came home one time in. He had been shot, mm -hmm. and my dad and him went upstairs and talked. They didn't talk in front of us. Okay. We'd been shot and, in the military, not yeah. like walking the street. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen too much back then. Okay. Well, to fill in, Army was uh, on a on the USS Enterprise. Yeah. Okay. And he he flew in. He wasn't a pilot, but he was like a radio man in a, what's called a TBF. Torpedo bomber fighter, which is an attack aircraft carrying a torpedo that would attack other vessels. And they got, to my knowledge, he got shot down twice and his wounds were shrapnel wounds. Wow. 
and you know Fred was on the Hornet when it got sunk. I've heard, I've heard that. that. I, I can't heard that confirm first. that. That would have been the Battle of Midway. Now, I had heard it one time. He was on the Hornet when it got sunk, and he actually climbed up onto it like a dirigible type thing. Well, that's what was told to us. Well, then that, I don't, I'm not here to discount it. Huh? Mm. So the, the Hornet was a, a ship? It was a aircraft carrier. carrier. Aircraft carrier, okay. Lost, it, I believe it was lost at the major right. battle of Midway which in the Pacific Ocean, which is a turning point in the Pacific yeah, Theater War. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. You I've always that. heard it. Yeah. Yeah, as, as far as I had heard, he was just on the West Coast doing the patrol the, with the blimps, but... I, I can't confirm that story, but I've heard that story. Okay. Now, imagine Navy records could confirm it. Or discount it. Well, I remember them saying, hearing him say he was in the water for quite a while. At your household when you were a child? Yeah. Well, then I would think it was more truth than not. Yeah. Oh, wow. Don't look into it. I'm surprised knowing my dad that he wouldn't have shared that all the time. A lot of times people who have those experiences that, never reveal Yeah. Them. Yeah. I have to tell you one story about Fred. You know, him and my brother Mike were really close. They used to do everything together. They used to be, you don't know what a skate boy is, but they worked at the roller rink. Okay. And so they used to be skate boys, you know, help people with their skating. Well, the one time, this guy that lived by us, they used to call him Groundhog. He was walking down the street and Mike, you know, was talking to him and he said, you know, Groundhog, I have a suit just like that. And the guy looked at him and he said, this, he said, well, for your brother Fred just gave me this suit. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm going to go out with some girl and he wanted me to look nice. So he got, gave me this suit. <laughs> and Mike said, well, that's my suit and I'd like to have it back. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing he used to do. He was very he, he, generous. Very generous with other people's things. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a cool story. <laughs> so, uh, back then, the radio was where you got most of your news? Oh, yeah. So, you'd be, uh, like, as a family, you'd just be around the radio at certain times of the day, or...? Well, you know, maybe in the evening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I know if I was home from school, my mother used to listen to soap operas. <laughs> okay. okay. In English or Italian? In English. In English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in the summertime, we'd get together, like, if, like, thought my brother Phil's wife, if she was home from work, like on vacation, she'd say, hey, get ready, we're going to go to the park. So we'd get ready and we'd all go to this little park, it's called Bushkill Park, mm -hmm. little amusement park. Okay. We'd go there and have a picnic and go swimming, you know, we'd go on the bus. <laughs> and we used to do things like that. Mm -hmm. And then later in life, my brother Phil bought cottages, it was called Hutchison, on the Delaware. River, on the Delaware River. Yeah, and every Sunday, we used to all go up to the to the river. You know, he had kayaks and rowboats, and yeah, wonderful. We go spend maybe the weekend there. So, and then later he bought cottages up at Mountain Lake, in New Jersey. New Abs That's in New Jersey. And then we used to go there. And I remember that's the first time I ever saw fire, fireflies. Really? Yeah, because we don't have them. I don't know if we I have them in Missouri. I think they, they do. do. They do. Do they? Mm -hmm. It's humid enough, as Brian will find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah How soon do you think you'll be moving? Well, the house should be uh, selling in a, in a few weeks, at least on the market. And then it'll be a little bit longer after that that I'll be able to. Then you'll be on back. your way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Did you buy a farm? Did you buy a farm? It's a small farm. It's like a farm. They drive back. 39 what? point four I acres. Gave I gave the green got three ponies. Yeah. 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 Y
the girl that used to work here in the office, she always used to tease me about that. Are you going to have coffee? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to turn the coffee on. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We went to St. Anthony's uh, for mm -hmm. our first communion and all, and mm -hmm. then they built a small church on South Side, St. Mary's, and we used to go there. Did you go to Catholic school too? I didn't go to Catholic school. Frank did though, my husband. Mm -hmm. He went six years, but graduated. None of, none of the kids, me. your siblings, went to Catholic school? No, we all went to public school. So the parents like you have to get you have to make go to church every Sunday or what? Well, we went to church, <laughs> and my dad went. <laughs> my mother didn't always go, but my dad always did. How come she didn't go? Pardon? Why didn't she always go? I guess she was too busy to go to church. <laughs> she was probably cooking for everybody That's to come back. Yeah, came back. back. Isn't yeah. it true that the churches were associated with different groups? So Sure. So St. Anthony's was associated with? Catholics. Uh, the Italians and Saint, Saint Joseph. Bernard, Saint Bernard. Saint Joseph was German, mm -hmm. and uh, Saint Bernard was Irish. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that wouldn't fly today, would it? That's how it was. That's what I remember. You could go to any church, so. right? Yeah, it all counted. How many times did we go to midnight mass at Saint Joseph's and sure. trudge through the snow? Sure. Because it was closer. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to school, went to at Saint school there. Taught by the Franciscans. Mm -hmm. So, what about get togethers? Like, besides Christmas, which you got to talk about Christmas, but birthdays and, you know. We got together for everything. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, we'd get together just for coffee. Right. If it was somebody's anniversary, we went there and maybe had cake and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you like have different clubs, like knitting clubs or. Bowling clubs or whatever, weren't there some Well, the kind guys of, went bowling. The guys went bowling. Yeah. But we had a secret pal club, the women. Oh, yeah? All the girls. But my brother Mike always used to show up <laughs> because he liked to be with the women. He enjoyed our company, he said. I can see that. <laughs> What about Christmas? Do they have traditions at Christmas time? Well, Christmas, Christmas Eve, we used to do, my mother used to do Christmas Eve, the seven fishes. She'd make seven different kinds of fish. Okay. And everybody would come home Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. And, but we didn't open our gifts until Christmas Day. But they would, the men, you know, everybody would be there. Uh-huh. And then New Year's Eve, my brother Phil would always come home with a big box of hats and horns and stuff. And we'd have a lot of food. Everybody would be home again. <laughs> every, every reason to get together. We always had a good reason to get together. <laughs> Even though if it wasn't when. <laughs> so but like then Christmas that. morning after you opened your presents, then what did you guys do? Well, we used to visit. We always visited everybody, you know, family. Okay. So one house after another. One house after another. Like Go see what they got. What'd you get? Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> see their gifts. <laughs> Did you guys do a Christmas tree? Oh, yeah. We always had a big Christmas tree. Okay. And one year my dad said, we're getting a little Christmas tree this year. And we said, no, Pop, we, we need a big tree. And he said, no, I don't have enough coal to hold it. <laughs> he was just teasing. But he did buy a small tree. And after he bought it, he said, you know, I really don't like a small tree. He oh. said, I think next year we'll go back to the big tree. <laughs> so what, did you guys play in the snow a lot? <laughs> did we? <laughs> We had a lot of snow to play in. <laughs> what kind of stuff did you do? Who'd you play with? We play make we try to make snowballs and throw them at each other and try to make a snowman if the snow was right. And what, help was, shovel. Were you on a hill? I can't remember. Yeah, we were. So did you sled? Oh yeah. Yeah, because that would be fun. We used to start at the top of well, it was called Wilkesburg Street. And then there would be Nesquahoning, and then our street was Reynolds. 
we always sleigh ride it on Reynolds Street. Uh, that would be fun. I can. Reynolds is downhill. Uh huh. And it crosses Nesca Honing. Okay. And then it goes downhill some more in front of the house that they live in. And then Chesse lived on Cole Street. Yeah, and that was another hill. That was a wonderful hill to sleigh ride. That was a, like ride. an alley because yeah. there was no traffic. No there. traffic. Oh, that would be fun. Now, was there um, mostly mostly just car traffic even back then, or was there still yeah, people with horses? Yeah, it was very light. Just light, okay. Light car traffic. I don't remember. The only horse and buggy I remember is there used to be a man used to come around selling produce, and <laughs> this story really happened. His horse died. Oh, no. In the middle of Nesquahone Street, and the cop came to direct tra the traffic that was going through, which was very light, and he, the cop said, will somebody help me move this horse and carriage because I don't know how to spell Nesquahone Street. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true story. I've heard story. that story. That I can't it. remember what the street was. They moved the two yes. beds. I can't they spell Nesquahone. Let's move it they down moved the street. They moved it down the Chunks, Chunks Street. Is that easy to write a report? It's not on Nesquahone. You can't spell Nesquahone. Well, groceries in general, did you mostly go to like a grocery store or was there more of that kind of thing where yeah, people Yeah, we went were... to the grocery store, but my mother did a lot of canning. We had a lot of stuff from our basement. <laughs> well, stores back then were what? Were they neighborhood stores yeah, mainly? Yeah, all neighborhood stores. But you had, you did have a, a real Italian store. Oh yeah, there were a couple what was of there? Italian stores. What, what did you buy there? Minios, and we had one right on the east and south side called uh, De Pamplices. Because I used to go there for my mother a lot. Were you, did you buy specific Italian foods there? Yeah, we used to buy provolone and and uh, I always remember she used to always buy those. Uh, what what is that little candy that you bought me? I can't remember the name of it, but I, I still. I can't buy remember it. the name of it either. But she always at Christmas time we always used to get a lot of stuff like that. Did you buy any? We call them chickpeas. Did you buy well, them? We used to buy those down at Minio's. So different stores for different things. Well, sure. the Italian store was very specific. Did, did you? Did your family ever buy bacala? Yes. <laughs> bacala you know, is salted cod. Cod that looks like a board. Okay. You have to soak it over a period of days. And that's a Christmas thing. You make stew with it, or you bake it. One of the fishes. Yeah, One of the seven it's, fishes. It's really a cod. <laughs> <laughs> it's really salted cod. That is one of the seven fishes <laughs> well, how many, specific what for kind Christmas. Are there? How many There's actually a good movie about that called The Feast of the Seven Fishes, and it's just an entertaining yeah. Italian family movie. I wonder where this tradition came from, though. And, it's and either supposed to be seven fishes from the sea because it leaves on the sea, or oh. it's something from the church. Yeah. But I mean, if they brought it with them. But nobody from Italy. really knows where it originated. <laughs> I know. And I wonder if you had more knows. stories about it. It's just amazing to me that your mom and dad didn't say more. And I know you know that your dad had sisters that were still in Italy because yeah. he would get letters from them. Yeah. But that they never talked about, you know, when I was a kid or, you know, that kind of thing. Hmm. My dad didn't talk about that. He, the only thing he ever said is when he was in Italy, he studied to be a priest. Mm. But when he got to Rosetta, he met my mother. That went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Pennsylvania, he you your mother until Pennsylvania. Well, he was sponsored by the priest. Yes, he was. Yeah. If you look at the, yeah. the manifest. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. When did, when did he meet her? He met her in Rosetta in, Pen in Pennsylvania. Oh, I thought they both came from No, Italy. no. My mother came over a year, I think, before my father. Oh, okay. So she did come She from came with there. her family yeah. and he came by himself. Yeah, he came by himself. But they didn't know each other then? Mm -mm. Oh. You well, know, my mother so was a redhead when she was young. 
Really? Yeah. And then when we were, well, I probably wasn't even born then, but she had got the flu and she lost all her hair. And when her hair came in, it came in black. Really? Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. really strange. I remember, you know, my older sister saying that. Yeah. Hmm. And I figure she must have been a redhead because she had a temper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't fool around with her. <laughs> it's funny because your dad sounds like he's pretty laid back. And my stuff. dad was. Yeah. Until he took his glasses down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other thing I found incredibly. He like, used to call my mother boss. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's the boss. The, the, the fact, because there's such an age spread with these 12 kids. Right. And that. Mamie, the oldest daughter, was having children, and your mom was still having children. Yeah, because children. there's only nine months difference between me and Dick. And that's Mamie's oldest son. And then there's Joan, the youngest, yeah. one, younger than her. After me. So that means that your, your own child already has her own children, you have grandkids, and you're still having children. It's that was getting started so early. So mm -hmm. strange. Would your mom? Would your mom think about that, or just, or anybody? It was just. Was that common? Well, yeah. Was that a normal, normal yeah. thing for families back then? Because the families were so there were, big. There were a lot of big families around our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. But to be pregnant at the same time as your child would be that'd be strange. It would be it? strange. It seems, but it was common then because yeah. such big families. Well, Dick was my playmate. Yeah. <sighs> Growing up, really. Yeah. Your nephew. We're the ones that were out in the boat together in Hutchison together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't swim. And Phil told us, he said, when you get out in the middle of that boat there, with that boat, you sit there and let Dick row. <laughs> and don't you try to row. Well, we got out in the middle of the river, and I said to Dick, I'm rowing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you think back, we really did some dangerous things. Well, I was trying to think who I went out with in the middle of the lake. You probably went with my, with Mickey. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. And we got back and he goes, that's the first time I haven't, haven't tipped that boat over. And <laughs> it would have been Danny. Danny, you think? Was it a sailboat? Mm -hmm. Danny. Mm -hmm. Your cousin Danny. Oh. Son to Army Zito. Yeah. It was a different world back then. It was, you know what? Yeah. It was a whole different world. My mother and dad never locked their doors. Yeah. And we were allowed to be out until dark. And we didn't, I mean. Except for Fred, who would come home at his own good time. Come home <laughs> when the lights go on. <laughs> <laughs> what about dating? Was there, were there rules about dating? Oh, <laughs> I have to tell you, when. I can only, I don't remember the older ones, but when June and and I were going with our fellows, if we come home from a date, we couldn't go out. If they didn't come down there before seven o'clock to go to the movies, then we couldn't go out. Oh. And when we came back from the movie, we had to be there right after nine o'clock because that's when the movie ended. And we sat in the living room. My mother sat with us. Oh. And that's the truth. <laughs> she was really strict with us. Mm -hmm. But I think if you have eight girls, you have to be. Yeah. I mean, if I had a girl today, I'd be really strict really? with her. <laughs> Nowadays, you really have to be. Do you remember what your mother said when you married? We're going to marry a non-Italian. My mother didn't want me to marry Frank. She wanted to marry Dominic Kapoor down the street. <laughs> And I said, Dominic and I are really good friends because he used to come and sit with me on the step. But we went to school together. And I said, no, I said, I'm marrying Frank. <laughs> and what was her reaction? Well, she didn't like it. Why? But I did it anyhow. Why didn't she like him? I don't know, maybe because he was Irish. <laughs> I, I thought she said something to the effect of a mixed marriage. Yeah, well, she did. Well, she said, you, you know, you marry an Italian. I said, I don't want to marry an Italian. I want to marry this Irishman. <laughs> 
So you have a little bit of Fred in you. <laughs> we all are. have a little bit of Fred in us. <laughs> is he the worst of them all? I think he was the most trying one. <laughs> but I, you know what? I think deep down he was my dad's favorite. I always felt like my dad favored him. <laughs> Why? Why? He didn't get the evil look as often? Or? <laughs> the glasses didn't come off. <laughs> Siblings and the children, were they encouraged to either become professionals or what were the boys encouraged to do versus the girls? Or? Well, the boys could do pretty much what they wanted to do. The girls couldn't. I mean, I remember saying to my mother, I'm going to go to be a nurse. And she, she said, well, you're going to stay in this house until you get married. <laughs> We yeah. were not. Was, were they trying to be protective? Or yeah, pro it was more for protection. Yeah. You know, like I said before, I think if, if you have eight daughters, I think you really have to be a little more protective of them. Were the boys encouraged to do anything in particular, or they just found their own way in the world? I think they more or less did. And I, truthfully, I think that, like, Army especially, I think that he was helping financially yeah with the family you said that that he left school early too yeah he did and i, I wondered if anyone went to college or nobody no. nobody in my family went to college we were lucky we finished high school but then i thought dad only went to eighth grade I don't know how far he That's went. Very I'm surprised he even went to school. <laughs> he probably played hooky a lot. I wouldn't be surprised. So when you uh, sort of defied your mom and married somebody that she didn't approve of, did you? What was life like for you at, at that point? I mean, just starting out on your on your own with your your new husband. Oh, it was great. Yeah. We went to New York on our honeymoon, and we went to see the ice show and we saw a, a Broadway show and traveled a lot. We went to St. Patrick's Cathedral for church. Was this the first time you've been like away from your little town? Yes, yeah. with him. <laughs> and, and he had a rail pass, did he not? Yeah, my, he had a, rental pa a railroad pass mm -hmm. because he worked on the railroad sometime in the summer as a groundsman. Because his father was a lineman, and so was his older brother. A lot of people sort of followed in their family line of business, well, more so back then. He did, but then he went to work later, right before we got married. He went to work at, it was called Dixie Cup Company. It was a big company I for them for a while. here in Easton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was Joan the last one living at home? Joan. She was the last one at home. Yes. What happened? Was there a point where there were no children at home anymore and it was just your mom and dad? My dad mother had, had died. Yeah. Before Joan got married? And, yeah. And she, her and my dad lived together. Her, who and did? we lived together. We went and lived with them for a while. But after, after Frankie was born, we moved out. So you and your husband went and lived with your dad yeah. <clears throat> after your mom passed yeah. away? Well, Multi-generational families, but then as you needed more room in the house, the a couple that could move out would move out, kind of a deal? Well, I don't know how that worked. They just moved out as they got married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So who, who was with your dad at the end? Joan was with my dad, and oh. Joan and Frank. Oh, okay. Joan got married then, <clears throat> and her and Frank moved in mm. with my dad. Because Joni was living with my dad. Mm -hmm. And Frank, when Frankie was born, we lived there for yeah. a while. Yeah. I was about four when he passed away, wasn't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I remember him almost like the scene from The Godfather where he's playing with his, God's, his grandson in the garden. Because and he, and he, he had that big garden. Yeah. And I would come home and look for him. I always remember one time, I don't know what you did, and my dad said to you, do you know what's going to happen if I take my belt off? Oh, no. <laughs> and you said, yeah, your pants will fall down. <laughs> and he never forgot that. <clears throat> he said, he's a smart boy. <laughs> I would have liked to know him better. Mm -hmm.
Well, oh. you you were lucky, Frank, for a long time. You used to meet him when he'd get off of his ride at the corner, and he'd always have something in his lunch pail for you. Maybe you don't remember it, because you were quite young. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. My dad was really good with the kids. Yeah, I have a picture of him with him and the kitty in the garden, <laughs> and me. <laughs> that's a wonderful picture. I remember that picture. Yeah. Do you remember it? Yeah. You have that picture? Yeah. I have a picture of her with him on my PowerPoint. Yeah, good. <clears throat> I don't know if it's that one or not. What would you say is your uh, was your biggest adventure? What do you remember in your life that's it's, it was your biggest adventure? When I was in grade school, the New York World's Fair was on in 1939. I was nine years old. So at school they said they were going to have this trip. So I went home and I said to my mother, I want to go to the World's Fair. And she said, you can't go. And I said, well, I really want to go. My class is going to go. So my brother Phil was there, and he said he was going to give me the money to go. Mm -hmm. So she finally let me go. And we went, and my, my nephew Dick went with me on this trip. Well, we went to the World's Fair, and it was great. We had such a good day. Coming home on the train, before we, we got to the train station, and there was a guy called Jimmy Amata, and his mother, she was really a protective mother. <laughs> she got on the train because she didn't want to see him go by himself. She got on the train with her apron on, because she had come to the train station to see us off. She decided to get on the train and come along. Well, coming back, we were just going to, yeah, we had to go up the steps to get to the train station. Well, somebody had a suitcase full of oranges, and the suitcase came open, and all these oranges were rolling down, and we were behind them. Well, we missed the train. And the only person that was with us was Mrs. Amada, <laughs> and she didn't speak very good English. <laughs> so this would be, yeah, something well, to remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was an adventure, trying to get a train to come home. But we finally got <clears throat> organized that. We got somebody to help us. We got on the train and got home. And when we got home, my mother was at the train station. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> and my dad, <laughs> they must have walked down there to the Lehigh Valley train station, it wasn't that far from our house. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest adventure I can ever remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never yeah. heard that one. But we were young. Really? <clears throat> Could you call ahead to your parents and tell them what happened? Or, or? I don't think my parents had a phone at that time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no cell phones. No cell phones. What did we do without them? I know. Them? It was a big deal when we got a phone. I don't think I knew that story, Mom. What story? <laughs> About the oranges and this and the train. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Jimmy Amata? He was around for a I know the name Amatos because there was plenty of Amatos in there. Yeah. I know the train station because there was the one right down off of Canal Street. It was right? beautiful inside. And it so was all marble. Sure they were beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we used to go to New York about once a month. Oh. Cause he had that, oh, he had that pass. So rail Sunday pass. mornings, he had a rail pass. Yeah. What would you Sunday do? Sunday mornings, we just go down and get on the train and go to New York. Mm -hmm. And do what? To go out to eat or just <clears throat> yeah. hang out and then. Yeah, we need breakfast when we got there. Mm -hmm. Go to church, walk around, go to different places. You know, mm -hmm. took the ferry out to the Statue of Liberty, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All that good stuff. It was only about what an hour away. Seventy-two miles, I think. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna guess sixty. So yeah, forty-three to Philadelphia. An hour, you yeah. know. Kind of like going to Portland from Salem. Yeah. We used to go to a lot of ball games as a family. I mean, like whoever had a car, we just drive to Philadelphia and go to ball games. Yeah. Did you go to the Yankees? Yeah, went to the Yankees game, went to the Phillies game. 
went to football games, whether we wanted to or not. <laughs> I didn't know that Dad and who played football. Your dad my and Mike. Dad. They that? played. They played on the same team, mm. and my brother-in-law played on the same team with them. Tom. The only reason I know that Dad played football, I didn't know for whom or whatever, but. Um, because he said, I was a really good football player because I would be running and I was so small they couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> so I could weave in and out. <laughs> I remember that. your dad saying that when they were in a service, they, were, they had both ended up in Pearl Harbor together. Your dad and Uncle Mike, and they didn't know it, and they ran into each other. Really? Yeah, they ran I into each the, other in just big hugs. Well, and the four of them ran into each other in San Diego at a bar. That I don't know. One was and Frank Cassessi. Yeah. Boy, and that would have been a hell race. Because Frank, <laughs> Frank was in the Navy, too. Yeah. Crazy. Well, I, do you have any more? I was going to take a picture of yeah, we can the do a four. Picture. Of, one, two, three, four. Well, I'll